So I hope you had a nice lunch. We're all fed, still awake. Uh, I have a tough act to follow, but Alistair will be back with some more information. After my presentation, I will go through some of our E-mount lenses. So I am Robin Albrecht. I am from Sony Nordic. I am uh, from Helsinki. So my Danish is not the best. Um, but I'd like to talk to you about our E-mount glasses. So E-mount has been available now for 13 years. It is 10 years ago today when we launched our first full frame mirrorless camera. And with these mirrorless cameras, we've also launched our new E-mount lineup. Um, and we have different segments within the E-mount lineup. So we have our G Master, which is the top of the line. Uh, with G, and G Master lenses, uh, what to expect? You, you get extremely sharp lenses that are fast focusing, but they have really nice bokeh as well. So with G Master, we really emphasize bokeh is really beautiful. Um, we also have slightly cheaper lenses, which are the G series, the basic G series lenses. And uh, then we have some that are not branded with any letter, but that's kind of our, in a nutshell, our lineup. But at Sony, um, we're very proud that we have this one mount system. So whichever lens you buy, whichever camera you buy, you can mount them on anything. And this is something we are very proud of. Proud of. You can start off with the FX30, for example, a great cinema camera, as, as we heard, uh, for beginners and also for professionals. But you can use the same lens you buy for that camera when you go up in the camera lineup. Um, but the cameras are, the lenses are designed to go on every camera, not only our cinema cameras, but also our still cameras, which means uh, the look needs to be very clean very crisp and then you need to remember that that you don't get like very cinema like cinema like looks for like for example with a very high end cinema lens where you might be searching for a specific look with these lenses you have a um, very clean and crisp look and you, then you create the atmosphere in post production but we are also very uh, proud of our in house development so everything is built in-house, as I said, to work with all the cameras and every part is built to work with each other. Um, and so we, when we have this in-house development, we can, within the uh, different groups in, within Sony, discuss and make sure that everything is working the best as it can. So for today, I'd like to go tell you a little bit about some advantages of why, why to choose a Sony Genuine Lens. What kind of features you can benefit from when you're shooting with a Sony E-mount lens. Um, and that is, of course, in terms of the autofocus, zooming, stabilization, and iris control. So we heard about this a bit earlier on already, um, that there are a lot of use cases now today where we need to rely on autofocus. So with the large sensor, we have shallow depth of field. It's very hard to do that manually, like with manual focus. But also in terms of slow motion, you have 120p to focus on moving subject. With that frame rate, it's very difficult. You need to rely on the autofocus. So the camera needs to be able to calculate how the subject is moving and the focus needs to follow. But also, we're doing, doing a lot of more like smaller productions where we're using gimbals, the one-man run-and-gun style. And also, when you're shooting with a large gimbal, it's great to rely on the autofocus to do the focusing for you. And you, you can, if, for example, shooting with an FX3, you can assign the tracking with just tapping on the back of the screen and then letting the camera do the rest. So autofocus is extremely important nowadays, and I think Sony is doing a great job within this segment. But also, we have some features in the cameras now where you can utilize the autofocus and manual focus. So you can assign the tracking on a subject, and if you have two subjects like this, you can then 
just twist the manual focused ring to the next subject, let it go, and then it will track the next subject. So this is what we call AF Assist, which we have also in FX6 and the other cameras, not only the, the smaller FX3 and FX30 cameras. So this is, it's utilizing the autofocus calculations, but also you're nudging the focus forward to change subjects. Here's another example of how this works. So it's just a great way to kind of tell the camera, no, I want to change the subject <coughs> to the one in the back, follow that person instead. We also have a cool, cool feature in, in, in the cameras where you can actually import a face into the camera and you can tell the camera that we want you to follow whenever this person is in frame, focus on this person. So this is a cool feature that we have in our cameras as well. So that's really neat. What is that called? Uh, it's just... Good question. It's a face, it's just face, face detection, I just think it is. I can double check that for you. I, but I think it's face detection. And how do you upload the picture? Uh, you can take a picture. Yeah. So if, for example, an example of a videographer shooting a wedding, uh, you take the bride and the groom, you take the pic their pictures, and then within that setting in the camera, you tell the camera these are the main people to focus during this day. FX9, I don't think. Face, face registration. Face registration. But is that in FX9? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you select the face. The camera has to be in face AF or face only mode. Yeah. Um, and if it's in face only mode and you use the thumbstick to select the face, that face becomes the okay. registered face and then that's the only face that will focus. Okay, mm. But I, I heard a good story about this. There was a journalist who was <coughs> went to the airport. They had a famous person come in. There were a lot of other people there taking those pictures and videos. So he opened his phone, grabbed the face from Google, registered the face, and then he just lifted the camera up in the air. <laughs> I'm done. So it then recognized the person, and he got the shot and got out and was able to upload that very quickly. So that's a very neat feature. Um, our lenses, so we know a lot of people who use manual focus still for different kind of shots. If you do certain focus pulls. Um, the lenses today are not kind of focused by wire. We're giving a digital input to the camera. They will tell, tell the camera that, okay, focus in that direction, focus that direction. Um, if you're using some third-party lenses, depending on the speed that you manually focus, if you focus, do a focus pull like, uh, you twist it 90 degrees, but you need to return to the same spot, but at a different speed, it might not return to the same spot, actually, it, it'll be out of focus. But our lenses have a system inside called linear response manual focus. So it doesn't matter how fast you're actually twisting the, the manual focus ring, it will, as, as long as you're doing it the same uh, distance, it'll return to the same spot. So this is something we've thought about, that it's very important for these kind of pulls to be able to do this with these kind of lenses that are not necessarily built for this style of videography, but we keep it in mind. And also a new feature that we got a while ago, um, that we have inside of the cameras is the focus breathing compensation. So we know we're building very small lenses. Uh, we know that they will have a bit of fo focus breathing. Um, and it's not desirable, and, but we know it, not everybody can buy a very expensive cinema lens. So we uh, made it a camera's internal software that can compensate this issue. So here in the first video, we have an example of some focus breathing with the 50 millimeter 1.2. So you can see that the end corners expands a little bit and it changes the focus again. It, goes back in. Um, with this feature on in the camera, it'll actually crop in about 10% to get rid of that focus breathing. It depends on, like 10% is a guideline, but it depends on what lens you're using. And this is only 
available with Sony G Master lenses. There are a few of the G lenses that work with this setting as well, but uh, the G Masters are fine. And now also in the FX6, this is was introduced in in some of the newer cameras, but we now through a software update we have this in the FX6 as well. So now you saw some autofocus features. So how is this actually working? Like, how come Sony's autofocus is so good? Uh, it is due to our, our focusing motors are a bit different. We don't have stepping motors. We've had linear response motors for quite, a, quite some time now. So almost all Sony lenses have these. Um, so the lens elements are on metal pins like this, that magnets are actually pushing backwards and forward to achieve very quick autofocus. So we have very powerful magnets that then pushes the lens elements in and back again to achieve very quick autofocus. But we know that these are not only designed for stills photography, these are also very important for video. So it's also very important that you're able to kind of control the speed so you can also have a very slow and cinematic autofocus. So this is how uh, the main thing is why Sony's autofocus is so good is these very high-end uh, powerful motors. But we also have some lenses that have power zoom. We know a lot of people like power zooms, especially in broadcasting. So we have a good, fairly good lineup of power zoom lenses, but of course we need more of them. But we have the more cinema uh, end power zoom lenses, and we also have some um, of these more basic, cheaper G-series power zoom lenses. And I'll show you a little bit about this. I'll disconnect this and I'll connect to the camera. So the great thing with this, uh, the power zoom lenses, let's see if this connects. I had a bit of trouble with this earlier on. Can you see the input there? No? Helps if I turn on the camera, for sure. Yeah, so utilizing these power zoom lenses is quite cool because we have, uh, the cable was not the best, there we go, okay. Um, we have a switch on the lens, we have some switches on the cameras, um, and we can also assign the power zoom to a custom button. And uh, within the menu, we can then also choose the speed of the zoom. So we can have a separate speed if you're in standby mode and a separate speed for recording mode. Because it's if you want a slow cinematic zoom within rec mode, then when you do, need to do the shot again, you need to kind of stop the video and then quickly zoom back out. So this is a very unique fe feature when you use this. So you can have one on the camera it can have one separate speed for um, the custom key. And then if you're using a remote, you can have a third speed for that remote. So then you can actually assign three different speeds for three different ways of, of uh, zooming in. So depending on the shot you're doing, you, didn't, you don't need to go during the filming to change these speeds. You have your setup all done already. So that's, in my opinion, it's quite handy, isn't it? Yes. Um, we also have a thing then, because now I have a 16 to 35 zoom on this camera here. Um, so now I have, if I just touch the dial slightly, it has a slow zoom, and then I can go fully to the end and it'll have has a quicker zoom. But now I'm, I'm moving within the range 16 to 35. But I just want to show another feature that we have called clear image zoom. Has anybody heard about it? A few few people, yeah. So it's actually pretty cool. So now in the zoom range, I'm in optical zoom only. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about digital zoom before. Digital, digital zoom is maybe, no, it degrades the picture a little bit. But clear image zoom is actually the picture quality will stay the same. But you can't go as far as with the digital zoom. Um, but if I activate this, depending on if I'm in uh, full HD or 4K, I get a different zoom range now. 
So I'm the camera is now in uh, full HD. So now I can go even further in from the 35 and I can go two times further in. If I'm in 4K, I can go 1.5 times further in. And you can utilize this shooting with a fixed lens as well. So if you're out, you need to get a shot, you only have a fixed lens with you, you can just turn the digital clear image zoom on and then you have a little bit of zoom to do those cool shots. So this is something, yeah. Why is it not possible on the FX9? Different processing. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I don't have FX9 experience that much. <laughs> I have a backup here. Yes. Yeah. So it, it's it's a cool way of knowing you have a bit of extra leeway there if you need need it. So I will connect the computer back again. Is there more clear image zoom on the Burano where it has like an eight? No, so on the Burano it's limited to when the camera is in the, at the moment with the current firmware, to the Super 35 mode and it's uh, 1.5 times. Um, but maybe you've noticed that a lot of our lenses don't have built-in IS. So image stabilization, we don't have that in many of the lenses. We have it in uh, the longer zoom lenses. Um, but we have a thing that is actually metering within the camera your movement. So with the FX3, like here, you have built-in IS, image IBIS. Um, but with the FX6, for example, it doesn't have it. But if you're shooting with a Sony lens, it, it camera is actually actually meeting, metering your movement, and then you can bring that soft into a software that we have um, called Catalyst Browse and Catalyst Prepare, and then with the FX6 you can actually stabilize that footage in post. So it has all of the information of your movement, uh, which is great. And uh, at the moment, at least, only can you, you can only utilize this with the Sony lenses. Yeah, it will crop in, of course, but when, but you get a more stable image. So there are some downsides there, of course. You, you can control how much it crops in. Yeah. Depending on how much stabilization you have. Yep. But I think uh, we, Alistair showed a bit about the built-in ND, but our lenses are also the trend has been that we have an aperture ring, <coughs> and um, you can because these lenses are used for both stills and video. Some people might need it to have a click, and some need to be, need for it to be clickless, and able to do um, specific type of shots where you don't want the exposure to change, but you just want the background, the the depth of field to change. So this is great with our lenses that you have that's able to make it. Uh, it's you have the feature to, uh, you can make it clickless for this types of shots. But as I said, we've been making lenses now, these E-mount e lenses for quite some time. So we have gone into our second generation of specific lens already. Um, we have, like you speak about the Holy Trinity, you have the 16 to 35, 24, 70, 70 to 200. They are all now G Master 2 lenses. So the second generation is here. And how have they improved? So the biggest thing is weight. First generation, second generation, there's quite a bit of difference in weight. Um, not necessarily in size. The 70 to 200 G Master 1 and 2 is the same actual size, but there's almost half a kilo difference in weight. So that's the biggest thing with the new lenses. But also, they are, of course, when you create a new lens, they're sharper and, and all of that. Um, but the G Master 2, if you can see here, the, we have the lens built up in 14 groups and 17 elements. And the G Master 1 is actually, it has 33 elements, if I remember correctly. So it's almost half of the amount of glass in the, in the actual lens, which makes it lighter. Um, so it's pretty cool that we can get, get the weight down. 
And all of our lenses are then dust and moisture resistant, are the G Masters. And we have a coating on the front glass that dispels water. So it's better at if shooting in the rain to get those drops off, they slide off more easily. And also one thing that uh, we've been focusing on is, is getting closer to the subject. So they're all better at close distance. And also bokeh is very important. So with the G Masters, you will have great bokeh with minimal onion rings. So it's a nice, smooth looking bokeh ring and round. And then of course, the handling of the lenses we knew that the, maybe the first generation was a bit front heavy. So now we have better balance as well because we know a lot of people will be shooting with gimbals. So that is, is how we're looking going forward at the G Master 2 lenses. And that was my bit. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, feel free. Um, yeah. Thank you. Just give us a moment to swap a few things around.